It seems the glass and steel towers clustered on Victoria Harbour are but a glittering veneer. One of Asia's, the world's great financial hubs, an entrepot which for a century and a half has straddled the fault line between East and West, profiting from both, is in trouble. The bottom line is that this sort of stuff is bad for business, but something even bigger, badder is happening. The multinationals and banks that list and thrive here have suddenly got nervy. China, facing insurrection, has demanded they nail their colours to the mast. That corporate Hong Kong kowtows. We'll always be identified with Hong Kong. Beijing went to great heights to publicly humiliate the pride of Hong Kong and perhaps its biggest brand. Yeah, we've always prided ourselves on our service. When cabin crew became involved in protests and a pilot was arrested, it triggered nationalist ire in China, which owns 30% of the airline. State media launched a propaganda war. Traitorous cafe staff would pose a safety threat, it was claimed. AS Cathay Pacific Group announced the share price plunged. And because the airline needs the mainland market, it became pretty clear heads would have to roll. The CEO and his number two were forced out last Friday. There's the old saying, you kill the chicken to scare the monkeys. This is the time where they killed the monkey to scare all the chickens. And because Cathay is, they're, they're, they're royalty around here. They are Hong Kong. So the idea that they can get basically keel hauled across, you know, the Chinese mainland media scape, lets everybody else know to run for the hills. Mark Simon's known as the loud American. He has permanent residency, and since 2000 has worked for a pro-democracy newspaper magnet who Beijing considers unpatriotic. We always forget, always forget, with all the hype about China business and all the talk about what China does, they are a Marxist-Leninist regime. And the big part of that we always forget about is Leninist. Marxist is the economic part, Leninist is the political part. We asked to speak to Cathay Pacific about the forced regime change. They declined. So did Swire, the parent company, and one of the original Hongs of Hong Kong. So did other Hongs, Jardines and Hutchison, as did HSBC. Big local companies also turned us down, along with three chambers of commerce. There is an unseasonal chill in the air, a climate of fear. Some big businesses have gone out of their way to condemn the Hong Kong mayhem. Yesterday, Carrie Lau, Hong Kong's pro-Beijing leader, was asked why, in the wake of the cafe crisis, businesses would want to invest at all with the threat of Chinese interference. I cannot comment as a chief executive on the commercial decisions of individual companies. Um, I hope you understand that. One of the most important strengths is a rule of law. But the laws that set Hong Kong apart and have given it its corporate advantage are threatened now that companies know they have to kiss the ring of the emperor, Xi Jinping. And then somehow, you know, Jeremy Tan is an elected Hong Kong legislator with a pro-democracy party. Until last night, he was also a Cathay Pacific pilot, a job he'd held for 18 years. He resigned because he felt he had an irreconcilable conflict of interest. People are scared. I mean, like, they're wary, of course. Uh, when you see, you know, the CEO have to resign. OK, and today I'm resigning because, you know, the unfair treatment or the unnecessary pressure, you know, from the Beijing government. What do you think the message is? Well, I think the message is pretty strong. Is uh, in Hong Kong, if you're running a business, it's no longer you can say, you know, I'm politically neutral. You know, when the Chinese government, when they want you to do something, you better to obey and do it immediately. That's right. Two floors below, the office of the vice chair of the largest pro-Beijing party, Holden Chow, told me Cathay Pacific had a problem because mainland Chinese passengers just didn't feel safe with rebel crew on board. Oh, and don't worry, he assured me, China needs Hong Kong almost as much as Hong Kong needs mainland China. I consider myself as a patriot, and I believe that Hong Kong under one country, two system, this is the beauty of Hong Kong. A Chinese patriot or a Hong Chinese Kong patriot? patriot? A Chinese patriot, of course. And I believe that Hong Kong all along, all along receive a lot of 
great support from the mainland too, because Hong Kong is part of China. If some people try to antagonize central government, then it might not be conducive to have uh, uh, the political reform be implemented in the future, because then you don't have the trust from the central government. But one thing I should say, for business to have their own decision, they need to cherish the very stable environment of the city. So you don't exactly have to read the tea leaves here. Beijing is boss, and submission is the price of doing business here. Off the record, business leaders say this will destroy the very thing that makes Hong Kong Hong Kong. Which is why, one pointed out, apart from Huawei and Alibaba, there aren't that many global brands headquartered in mainland China. The multinationals that occupy these towers of glass and steel will start voting with their feet 